final leg. Back here to talk about some of the great performances we saw as recent as this weekend. Took a little bit of time off. Didn't see some huge, huge ones the previous weekend, but the sprints were back on full action this weekend. First off, down in Kingston, Jamaica, Shelly Ann Fraser Price. She really lit the track on fire. 10.87 seconds, improving her world leading performance, showing that she is still in great form and, in my opinion, still the favorite for the 100 meter gold medal in Tokyo next year. This was a huge performance and shows that she is not letting up. But at the same meet, different heat though, so she didn't run with Shelly and Fraser Price. Elaine Thompson, also in the 100 meter dash, 10.88 seconds. So just a hundredth of a second behind Shelly and Fraser Price. But Elaine Thompson really stepping things up. She's been creeping down and down further in that 100 meter dash time, showing that she's really getting back healthy. She's really improving upon those injuries. That wasn't it though. Elaine Thompson, she followed things up the next day in the 200 meters, came away with a best of 22.19 seconds. Now this really is what solidified it for me, showing that she is really, really healthy. Of course, it's not sub 22 seconds, but it shows that with the 100 meters and the 200 meters, she looks primed to potentially go for a defense of her Olympic gold medals that she won back in 2016. So both these Jamaican ladies, they are going to be lighting the track on fire, despite all the competition that's going to be coming their way. So keep a lookout for them. Speaking of the competition that's coming their way, Sha'Carri Richardson, she just keeps going week after week. Down in Florida in the 100 meter dash, she ran heats and the finals. In the heat, she got out to a best of 10.95 seconds. Huge performance. This is actually her second fastest race in her entire career. Only behind that 10.75 second race that she had at NCAAs last year. So this is a really great performance. Of course, she's had other wind-aided performances, but she followed that up in the finals here running 10.83 seconds. Now, unfortunately, the wind was plus 2.1 meters per second. That's just 0 0.01 meters per second ahead of the allowable limit. So huge, huge performance. She's definitely going to be in the mix. I really see her as not only making the U.S. team, but as one of the co-favorites, along with Shelly Ann Fraser Price and with Elaine Thompson to get that gold medal in the 100 meter dash. So of course, there's a couple other ladies, but these ladies are the prime targets for that gold medal. Also, Richardson managed to run the 200 as well. She ran 22 seconds flat. Now, this improves upon her personal best that she ran at the NCAAs last year by a significant margin. And this was a legal run. So she's showing that she might go for the double. I think she should focus on that 100 meters to really try and get that 100 meter dash gold medal. But of course, we know that the 200 comes after the 100. So no need to worry about sacrificing that 100 meters. So Kerry Richardson, always on everyone's radar, always lighting up the track week after week, so definitely look out for more of her as the season progresses. Now, still in Florida, we also saw Trayvon Bramell back on the track for another week. He got out to a best in the 100 meter heats of 9.99 seconds, another legal 100 meter time, really just stacking on the performances week after week. Like I said, he came back in the finals, this time wind aided 9.87 seconds. So it's the first time he's got under that 9.90 second barrier. Like I said, this was wind aided plus 2.5 meters per second, but just like Shakiri Rich, Richardson just over the allowable, not too far ahead. So again, showing that consistency, he looks to be primed. He looks to be healthy, recovered from his injuries. Definitely going to be contender for a gold medal, I think, in the 100 meter dash. So finally, down in Florida, Kenny Benarek, one of the most prominent 200 meter runners from the United States over the past year or so, he got out to a world lead personal best of 19.80 seconds. Huge performance for him and huge performance globally. Only three other people have ever run fast faster than this in the past year. Noah Lyles, Michael Norman, and Divine Oduduru. Of course, we know Michael Norman is going to be focusing on that 400 meters. Divine Oduduru, he's likely going to double, but we have to see a lot more from him. I think Kenny Benarek is definitely one of the favorites to get a medal in Tokyo next year. Now, of course, there's some other athletes, Andre de Graz, Romel Guliev. A lot of guys are definitely going to be a contention, but Kenny Benarek, he showed last year, even though he got injured, that he can still compete with some of the best, and this performance really shows that. So, Keep a lookout for him as we go into the Olympic year. Now let's head over to Europe in Sweden. We saw Daniel Stahl from Sweden. He was competing in his home country in that discus throw. Got out to a huge best of 71.37 meters. Now this is his second farthest throw in his entire career. Of course he has that one throw that makes him number four all time. But this throw also pits him in the top 15 throws in history. Showing that consistency. We saw him throw 70 meters earlier this year. This throw was a little bit contested 
arrested. They said it was a foul at first, but then they reinstated it. But of course, we know Stahl is consistent, and he is definitely going to be the favorite going into Tokyo. He'll have a lot of competition from the likes of Frederick Dockers from Jamaica, but Daniel Stahl is definitely going to be that odds-on favorite to get the gold medal in Tokyo. Now, with the World Athletics Continental Cup that kicked off in Turku, Finland just yesterday, we saw Johannes Vetter from Germany, one of the greatest javelin throwers over the past couple of years. Huge, huge world lead and best of 91.49 meters. So great performance. Anytime we see the javelin throw over 90 meters, it is a huge performance. He's definitely showing his consistency. There's a lot of other guys, Magnus Kurt, his other German teammates as well. They're definitely going to be in contention, but Vetter showing his consistency going into the 2020 Olympic season. Also in Finland, we saw the hurdlers put down some great performances. Andrew Pazzi from Great Britain, he managed to put down the 110 hurdles world lead of 13.17 seconds. He's been improving his world lead all throughout the season. Of course, we're not seeing so many athletes compete, but this is some great consistency that he's been showing. Also on the women's side in the 100 meter hurdles, Nadine Visser from the Netherlands, she got out to a world lead best of 12.68 seconds. So great performances from all the athletes at the World Athletics Continental Cup. Now we're going to come back to the United States where we saw the AAU championships going down in the US this past week. Arian Knighton, he's only 16 years old and in the 200 meters, he ran 20.33 seconds. Now again, it might not be too fast, but again, he is 16 years old. The only person in history who's under 18 years old to ever run that fast was Usain Bolt. Back in 2003, Bolt ran 20.13 seconds. So this is the number two youth time in history of the 200 meters. So Knighton is definitely going to be one to look out for. Of course, though, we have to note that he is also a football player. So we might lose him to the football teams like we did Marcus Goodwin, like we did Tyreek Hill. So might see him not compete in track for consistently, but he's definitely going to be one to look out for if he does stick it through. Now, taking it back a couple, we did see some other results that happened the previous weekend. Have to know, Wade Van Niekerk, he was going to be running in Italy, the 400 and the 100 meter dash, but unfortunately he tested positive for COVID, so he couldn't compete in the meet that day. But then later on at night, he had a second test. That test actually came up negative. So we had a little bit of back and forth, but he's likely going to be back on the track soon. We might see him at a couple of the Diamond League meets that we have coming up. Definitely could be a lookout for Wade Van Niekerk to see if he's back healthy from the injury he suffered just a couple years ago. At that meet in Italy, though, we saw Gemma Ricci and Laura Muir, both of them competing for Great Britain. We saw them run some great 800s earlier in the indoor season. Ricci came out for a best of 1 minute 59.52 seconds. World leading performance for her. Laura Muir was not too far behind, 1 minute 59.54 seconds. So really, Ricci just got it out on the lean, but great performances from these ladies in that 800 meters. Speaking of the 800 meters, Donovan Brazier, the world champion, he was out in Oregon. He managed to get out to a best of 1 minute 43.84 seconds almost a very comfortable training run it looked like for him and to be able to do it in one minute 43 seconds is a huge testament of how great of a form that he's in right now so he definitely looks like the clear favorite going into the tokyo olympics next year and we're gonna see him at the monaco diamond league so definitely look out for something fast from him there in the pole vault we saw katie Nijat from the united states she got out to a world leading performance of 4.92 meters now this is very significant because it makes her number six all time in the pole vault. Huge performance for her. Again, personal best, number six all time. She's definitely going to be very competitive. I think she might be able to get a medal going into Tokyo next year. There's tons of competition, but keep a lookout for her. Finally, let's end things off with Valerie Alman from the United States in that women's discus throw. She got out to a best of 70.15 meters, broke the American record in the discus throw, made her number 24 all time in the discus. Definitely one to look out for. Of course, we may not see her get into the medals. Definitely got to get a little bit farther but this is some great performance we don't usually see some great throwers from the united states but almond is showing that she's here to compete and definitely here to stay all right, so those are just some of the highlights from the past week and a half, two weeks or so. We definitely got to keep a lookout. There's the Diamond Leagues coming up. Monaco is coming up just this Friday. So some great highlights are going to be coming out of that. Some high profile names, Donovan Brazier, Noah Lyles. Keep a lookout for some results like that. Make sure you guys go in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite performance from these past couple weeks were. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and be back again next time. Thanks.